看今天的汉天新闻，我是赵子彤。首先来看美国国内消息，在美国新罕布什尔州举行的民主党初选中，现年七十八岁的桑德斯来自福蒙特州。这位自称民主社会主义者的民主党参选议员，在新罕布什尔州的初选中，以百分之二十六的得票率名列第一。根据分析，在新罕布什尔州的初选胜利，将为候选人之后的竞选铺平道路。初选失败，便可导致政党捐款减少，以及竞选者被迫退出。但同时，政治专家也表示，现在还不能说桑德斯作为民主党总统候选人已经稳操胜券。不过，竞争者人数正在减少，桑德斯目前普遍被看好。First Senator, congratulations. How are you feeling after last night? Feeling great. So the results, I mean, a win is a win, but the results were a little closer than you know the night. Keep talking. Here. Okay. Results were a little bit closer in the night started out. I mean, the moderate wing of the party, right now led by Pete Buttigieg, is still pretty formidable. What does that say to you that you know there's still so many Democrats that are leaning more moderate with their votes? Well, it sends to me that we won the popular vote in Iowa. We won the vote here in New Hampshire. I believe we're going to win in Nevada. I think we're going to win in South Carolina. I think we're going to win a whole lot of states on Super Tuesday. We are putting the co putting together a coalition of working people. Of young people, of people who have given up on the political process, who are now coming back into it because they want a government finally that represents all of us, not just the one percent. We're feeling great. We think we're on a path to victory. We'll win the nomination, and I think we're going to beat Donald Trump big time. Now,、uh, Lloyd Blankfield, former CEO of Goldman Sachs, who I know you、uh, not 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 one of your biggest fans, not someone that you care about, but being your biggest fan,、uh, said that you know you would be. Uh, just as divisive as, of a candidate as President Trump. What's your reaction to that? Let me see. A billionaire executive on Wall Street doesn't like me.、Mm. I am shocked by that, Annie.、Mm -hmm. I am really shocked.、Uh, look, what Mr. Blankfein and others are worried about is that we're going to start breaking up the large、uh, Wall Street banks that nearly destroyed our economy because of their illegal activity. We're going to make Wall Street and billionaires start paying their fair share of taxes. So. Needless to say, I am not too shocked that Wall Street CEOs don't like me. Now, the Culinary Union last night, on the heels of your win here, put out a statement about how your Medicare for All plan is going to be cutting、uh, Medicare for their union workers.、Uh, we're heading to Nevada, where the Culinary Union is a big player there.、Um, what is your message about uh, keeping uh, keeping those union workers happy with their health care?、Uh, the Culinary Workers are a great union.、Uh, we work with them. We will work with them. But here is the point. Uh, the point is that Medicare for all, expanding Medicare to cover every man, woman, and child, expanding it to cover hearing aids, eyeglasses,、uh, dental care, and home health care is going to work for every worker in America, especially for union workers. So we're going to sit down with our friends in the Culinary Workers Union. But we remain today the only major country on earth not to guarantee health care to all. We spend twice as much per person on healthcare as do the people of other countries, and yet 87 million of us are either uninsured, underinsured, and 30,000 die each year because they don't go to a doctor on time. Medicare for all is the future of our country, and we're going to pass it. And Pete Buttigieg, who、uh, came in a close second here, he was tweeting today about,、uh, without actually men mentioning the Culinary Union, but talking about how his plan for Medicare for all who want it would allow union workers to keep their plan. How do you specifically respond、uh, to Buttigieg on that? Under Mayor Buttigieg's plan, the average worker in America will be paying far, far, far more for health care than under our plan. Look, once again, we are the only major country on Earth, 200 miles away from us in Canada. Everybody has health care. Go to any doctor you want. They don't have to take out their wallets or their credit card, and they spend as a people one half as much as we do. The function of health care is not to make billions of profits for the drug companies and the insurance companies. It is to guarantee health care for all union workers, non-union workers. All are going to benefit under Medicare for all. And lastly, you know, we're moving west now. First with Nevada, and then down to South Carolina. Much more diverse states. How is your? How are you feeling about moving to those states? And do you feel like your message or your、uh, your campaign is going to differ at all now that we enter this next phase? We're feeling really good.、Uh, we work on hard. We have a great grassroots organization, both in Nevada and South Carolina. You know, we are putting together a multi generational, multi racial coalition. Uh, and I think we're going to do very well in the African American community and in the Latino community. We're going to win working class support all across the board. 
Uh, so we're feeling very good. I think we got a real shot to win in both Nevada and South Carolina. Senator, thanks so much for your time. 美国当地时间十一日，现年七十七岁的拜登在新罕布什尔州的民主党总统初选中惨败。拜登在民意调查结束前从新罕布什尔州起飞，并将于二十九日初选前前往南卡罗来纳州竞选。但有消息称，拜登的一些幕后支持团队已经开始表达对他失去信心，也许等不到三月三日超级星期二就好尽力气。面对目前并不顺利的初选局面，日前，美国前副总统拜登接受了采访，并回答了相关的问题。It's go time. It is go time. The first primary. First primary. You said Iowa was a gut punch. What are you expecting here? Well, I think as I told you, I think we're it's an uphill race here because you know we're running against two senators from neighboring states. Has never been a good thing to happen to any other candidate going into the race. And uh, but I'm anxious to get to South Carolina and Nevada. I, we and I have talked about this before. I view this as you know a, a, you know, a package of four, just out of the gate.、Right. And I don't know how you can judge who's going to be likely be able to win the nomination、uh, until you have the African American vote and the Latino vote,、uh, and that doesn't come till a little later. I want, I want to talk about that, but let's you know the history. If you lose these two. You, the chances are you go on. You can't win the other ones. You don't believe that. But you、that? also know the history. The only people who've ever won are people who have overwhelming support in the African American community. Yeah. So there's two thin pieces here, and the idea that、uh, that you're gonna anybody's gonna be able to call a race between now and the end of and tomorrow and tomorrow night. Is just ridiculous. The idea that you know we're just going to get into the meat of things in a, in a, in the next、uh, three weeks. So I think it's just,、uh, and I've honestly believed, Don, from the beginning. I think we talked about it. You know, you got to look at the first four and see where you are after that. Yeah. So you, you know, let's talk about that. You, you you mentioned the support among African Americans. You you do have overwhelming support, but in the last poll it showed it's it's fallen like at fifty percent. So without that, yeah, in the Quinnipiac poll has gone from forty-nine percent in January now to twenty-seven percent. Well, that's the only poll that shows that. I don't think that's. I think, think that's, that's an outlier. An, I think it's an outlier.、I、so、do. if that, but if that is in, if that indeed happens, what's your path to victory then? My path to victory is Super Tuesday, and whether or not I can look. The next person, the, the the next nominee is going to have to be able to win in Pennsylvania, in Michigan, in Arizona, in places that we haven't won in a while. And、uh, not a while. We didn't win last time, and all the polling data, unless something's changed overnight, shows I win there. I'm I'm the I'm the strongest candidate there. For example, just since、uh, Iowa, the African, the Black Caucus in Michigan spontaneously in the, in the legislature endorsed me. A whole lot of endorsements have come forward just since just since after. New Hampshire,、mm-hmm. we're raising about three hundred and fifty thousand bucks a day this month online. So I, I don't, I don't get a sense that there's any that that kind of panic. I was on the phone today with the South Carolina team. They feel good. I feel good. Bloomberg is gaining, it says, and your support among African Americans is dropping. Well, look,、uh, I'm looking forward to look, between Bloomberg and Steyer. They've already spent a half a billion dollars. A half a billion dollars in advertising, on air, and Bloomberg mostly in South Carolina and in, in the states that come after the first two primaries, the, the, the first two caucus, caucus and primary. And I'm looking forward to debating him on his position on the issues that are concerned to the African American community.、Yeah. I'm ready to do that. Do you, have you been paying attention to James Carville? James Carville, you know James Carville. Yeah, I sure know. James Carville has been saying, "Listen, I, I, he's hoping." I, I saw him this morning on TV, and he said, "I'm hoping African Americans in the South can save this thing because they want things that are real. They're not looking for fantasy and for a revolution. They they care about their jobs, about t- being able to take care of their families, about health care. What do you feel about?、That? He he feels that the party is moving too far to the left and is becoming an ideological cult." Rather than focusing on the issues that are important to the folks, I think he's absolutely right about African Americans. But I also think he's right about white middle class folks and working class folks. They want to know what you're doing. They want authenticity. Tell me what you're going to do, how it's going to work, how we're going to pay for it, who's going to pay for it, and tell me whether it's real. Can you get it done? And that's the place where I think I'm in the strongest position. I've been able to bring people together. I've been able to get things done, big things done. I managed the nine hundred billion dollar recovery act. I put ninety billion dollars into 
making sure we invest in clean energy and clean technologies. We've saved thousands, hundreds of cities around the country. I, you know, I, the president turned to me, you may remember, and said, fix Detroit. Well, you know, you know, pick up the phone and call Mayor Duggins and ask him what we did in Detroit. I he mean, supports you. Didn't he, he's a big guy. Yeah, he's an endorser. So, you know, I think mayors had a are really important jobs. I think they have a tough job. But for example, even in South in South Bend, we put sixty five million dollars in the South Bend from the Recovery Act. I'm not suggesting they don't do a great job. What I'm suggesting is that it's much beyond just whether or not you're going to be able to go out and do something in the city. You could, you, there's a new ad that you talked about, um, Mayor Buttigieg, and compared his record to your record. Some people saw the ad or see it as, as mocking. What do you say to that? Because then you say you, you, you worked with mayors. Mayors' jobs yeah, are important. Sure. But they, 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 no, they're really important. Look, what, first of all, it's not an ad. We went online with a, with a, with a video responding to the overwhelming criticism the mayor has made of me. He says, we inherited all our problems. The problems didn't start with Trump. We inherited them. Who did he inherit from? What was the previous eight years? Barack Obama and Joe Biden. What? Tell me. We saved the economy. We moved us in a direction that was significantly different than we were before. And my, my whole plan is to build on what we've done, whether it's health care, realistic health care, getting everybody covered, everybody able to be covered, being able to pay for it, making sure that we can fundamentally in, 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 increase the funding we have for schools and for Title I schools in particular, making sure that we spend the kind of money we need to spend to deal with global climate change and what we've done. I mean, so I, I, I don't quite, you know, I, you know, I, I'm involved in making sure the chemical weapons ban got trapped, bat, passed, the uh, arms control treaties. I think it's as relevant today that I played a major part in making sure we kept Iran from getting a nuclear weapon by having imposing sanctions on them and getting the rest of the world to agree and have inspectors on the ground. Let's talk, let's talk about the economy um, because, you know, the, he's saying it's the best economy and, you know, lowest African-American unemployment, things are going great. He's taking credit for a good economy. I'm wondering if it makes it tougher for three years in for Democrats to claim, you know, that it's an Obama economy. Now, to be fair, during the the um, I think job growth under Obama was 8.1 million. That was in the his last 36 months compared to Trump's first 36 months, 6.6 .6 million. That's two million plus more jobs under Obama than Trump. But he's taking credit for a good economy. But does it make it harder but three we years didn't in? Even think the economy was good as it should be then. Look, look out there. You have working class and middle class people are getting crushed. Middle class people, if they get a bill for 400 bucks, they didn't expect all the studies show they have to sell something or borrow the money. We have the we're no longer the wealthiest middle class in the world. But why, the, but why are the why are the candidates allowing the Trump administration to get away with the idea of we're, we, you know, we fix the economy, we inherited a mess, when, when actual job growth is that's slower true. under this administration than the previous administration. Well, by the way, the reason is that, look, I talk, I, I, I said when I ran, I remember saying this on your show, for three reasons, restore the soul of the country and rebuild the backbone of the country. The backbone of the country is the working class and middle class, and they're getting killed. Their backs are being broken now, right now. We don't have to even argue about the fact we created more jobs. We were in the process of raising salaries, moving the country. Look what this guy did. He just went, introduced a budget where he's going to cut Medicaid and Obamacare by $1 trillion. $1 trillion. He's cutting food stamps. He's going out and making sure that the op job opportunities are, are, are being curtailed. He's doing away with health care. I mean, look, the middle class and working class folks are dying right now. We were talking about the ideological left, and um, and I, I, I would imagine what someone like Carvel is talking about is Bernie Sanders, and in some instances, maybe Elizabeth Warren, when he talks about the party. Bernie Sanders is a self-described democratic socialist. He embraces that. You are concerned about that because you think it's harder for down ticket for governors and mayors and senators to be able to run with the when the head of the party says that he's a democratic socialist. Shouldn't the voters decide? Sure they will. But what do you think? I know you can't answer me, but what do you think? You think it's good? We, we not only have to beat Trump, we have to win back the Senate. 
like we did win back the House. I went into 24 states, 65 candidates. They asked me to come in in red states and purple states, not, not, not blue states, and they won. 41 of them won. The so-called, the, 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 the folks who won those races, they're on the line. They've come and asked me to campaign for them. Did anybody ask Bernie to campaign? Bernie's a good guy. But you want to run, you say you know Louisiana, you know Georgia, you want to run with the top of the ticket of defining the Democratic Party as a socialist? Mm. Now, he's not a bad guy. Bernie's a great guy, but it's his self his self definition. Yeah. So the question is, who can help us win back the Senate most? Yeah. Who's going to be able to do that? And I think people who are not, who in fact, look, just ask yourself whether or not he's being invited, these frontline states. Are they inviting him in to speak? Are they inviting him to go? And he's a good guy. I'm not, but he's a, he's self, he talks about me having baggage. You walk in, would you reckon, I know you know the South. You're going to walk into any of those states we have to win, like Florida and other places that we're going to win in Georgia and North Carolina yeah. and say, by the way, my president it describes himself as a democratic socialist. What do you think Trump will do with that? L let me ask you more. I'm going to talk about, because we, we've been talking about the black vote, right? You think that, you yeah. said South Carolina's a firewall, and that's going to, you can't win uh, the nomination without having black support. But what has changed among white voters in the Democratic Party that has put you at a disadvantage, especially in New Hampshire and well, in Iowa? Well, what, what hasn't changed is white working class voters. That hasn't changed. People who are struggling. Look, uh, both New Hampshire and um, and uh, uh, in Iowa, there, there's a strong liberal base of college-educated folks, and they're good people. They're good people. Let's talk about impeachment, because this whole impeachment thing was around, basically around you. Yeah. And what, and what the president asked Ukraine to do regarding your son. Um, Rudy Giuliani, is, they're saying, the DOJ is saying Rudy Giuliani, um, or the attorney general is right, Rudy Giuliani is funneling information to them. Are, is he, are, are they using the Justice Department to try to justify what he did with you, Ukraine or to try to get information on you? Well, they can get all the information they want on me. Every single person under oath in his administration who testified before the House said Biden was clean as a whistle. Biden did his job. Biden has great integrity. On down the line. Now, he's firing them one by one after they testified under oath. Nobody. Nobody, including the Ukrainians, has suggested. And you send a man of great stature like Rudy Giuliani to dig up dirt? Come on. The day after he was acquitted by the yeah. Senate, they want your son's travel records from sure. the Secret Service. <laughs> of course. What, what is going on? What's going on? He's, look, he's deathly afraid to face me. Have you ever, you can't answer it, I know, but rhetorical question, have you ever seen a sitting president spend as much time, money, and effort, including risking being impeached and thrown out of office to decide to eliminate one of his potential opponents in a primary? I mean, that are running in a primary for the general election? This guy is obsessed with me, and he should be with good reason, because I will beat him. Do you have faith, still have faith in the government? especially considering what you've seen happen in Washington, D.C. over the last couple of weeks? I have faith in the American people, and I have faith in the bulk of the Senate to know what they did was wrong. I've served there for years and years and years. I'm embarrassed what happened. That's why we have to hold the Senate accountable. We have to restore the integrity of the Congress. Mm -hmm. Three equal branches of the government. Think of what they did, Don. They all said, almost to a person. Yeah, he did what they said he did. That's true, but it's not impeachable. So to the folks who are, are saying, are saying, okay, his, his campaign is over. You know, there are folks, people are out there saying, he's gonna drop out, there's no way he can do it. Me? And to, yeah, you. And for the American people who, are, who may be skeptical saying, I don't know what's happening with Biden, what do you say to them? What I say to them, we, look what's happening just since Iowa. We've got, we've been averaging $350,000 a day online contributions. We just got endorsed by the Michigan Black Caucus. I never spoke to them, the state legislative Black Caucus. Two dozen uh, people I didn't even, I didn't even know in the state of New Hampshire, I mean, in the state of Rhode Island, governors in Alabama and in Tennessee and so on. I mean, I've gotten more, four unions have come forward, major unions since then, and endorsed me. So you're not, you're not having any money issues? No, I don't. And you're not going anywhere? I'm not going you're anywhere. You're a fighter. I'm in this to the end, and I believe I'm going to win this nomination. I really do. Thank you, Mr. Thanks, Vice President. Pal. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. 
休息一下，马上回来。